Hey guys, my name is Tom Keitel. Welcome to the Gay Coaches Alliance Conference 2019 Proposal Think Tank. And I'm Jeff Nally, everybody. Good to see you. Uh, we are volunteers who are working on the conference planning committee, and we're glad you can join us for today's call. So what is a think tank? Well, it's an opportunity to investigate the kind of thinking that goes into developing a workshop proposal for the upcoming GCA conference held at Eastern Mountain in Greenwich, New York. Our goal is to give you some basic information about what goes into a proposal. That way, you'll have a clear idea of what's involved. So now that most of you know, our retreat will be held at conference, will be held at the Easton Mountain Retreat Center. Uh, the conference has two different parts. The first is a one-day pre-conference institute, uh, which is going to be run this year by Jeff Moore. And then there is a second part, a three-day main conference. The conference dates are May 2nd through May 5th, 2019. During the pre-conference institute, the attendees will participate in a five and one half hour workshop spread across morning and afternoon sessions. Jeff Moore has done a lot to organize and prepare his workshop. And of course, main conference workshops are much shorter than that. During the pre-conference institute, attendees will participate in a five and a half hour session. And Jeff is being paid to offer that workshop. The main conference workshops are normally 75 minutes each and the presenters are not paid. To provide GCA members with the greatest opportunity, the main conference workshops are on topics which members themselves want to explore and test out because the GCA is a safe environment in which members are continually developing their skills as professional coaches we encourage conference participants to focus every workshop on the content which they are most interested in. So let me come cover some potential topics that might capture your interest. As you approach a topic, it's best to identify your content in some way. Here are some possible content classifications. Business and marketing, networking, theory and best practice, social and fun, creative and exploratory, or spiritual and erotic. Narrowing down your con content to a specific topic can be challenging, especially if you wanna keep your workshop interactive. So if you have a topic such as techniques for establishing rapport with your client, it's best to look at that content as a series of exercises or as a game where participants get to practice the skills you are offering in an interactive and engaging way. Isolating and developing your exercises is one of the most important parts of developing a workshop. Every workshop will have new information that must be presented as exposition. But the trick is to make your new information as concise and as light as possible. Most attendees want to make use of any new information right away. So it's best to think about your exercises first and then decide on limiting the new content to just what is the most essential. Okay, let's think about what goes on in an actual 75 minute presentation. Most presenters will ice break the workshop in some way. For example, they'll ask the audience what their expectations are. They will ask participants to describe situations that they have been in that relate to the content they want to present. Or they will have participants exchange some piece of information with a neighbor. All of these icebreaking techniques establish a rapport among the group and they introduce the topic by creating greater relevance. Next, presenters often will set expectations for the workshop and identify what skills the participants will get. It's always a good practice to set out the with them, what's in it for me, early in the workshop. Next, a presenter will make a short presentation of some new information 
such as a definition or a story that highlights a critical piece of information, which then sets up the first exercise. By alternating new information and exercises, the workshop content can be presented over a variety of exchanges. This general approach is the most common approach, but we encourage you to consider other approaches as well. For example, a workshop might be organized as a fishbowl. What's a fishbowl? Well, it's a way to solicit the wisdom of the entire group during the session. When a fishbowl is used, the presenter is assuming that all the information needed to build relevance and clarity already exists with the people in the room. A fishbowl is often called an unconference since there is no sage from the stage who is imparting wisdom about a topic. This technique is often used to address common difficulties that might, by, that might be shared by everyone in the group. Suppose the topic was working with a difficult client. The presenter might offer three scenarios which highlight the most common struggles which a coach might have. The presenter then asks three volunteers to come forward, each one to think about just one of the three scenarios. Then using open-ended questions, the presenter has those three mm -hmm. volunteers discuss the problem in a fishbowl. What this means is that only those three volunteers are allowed to speak. Everyone else simply listens to how they engage with the issue and formulates an alternative approach for how they might work through the same kind of different difficult client situation. With the fishbowl, volunteers' comments are based on the three scenarios offered and what each volunteer saw in those three scenarios. Once those three volunteers are then complete, three more invited in and then three new different scenarios are then offered. So that's one alternative. We also have had presenters who have successfully used other workshop forums. For example, a lecture, a panel discussion, or an open forum. The lecture is the most difficult to pull off unless your topic is really hot and you know how to make a topic that's really interesting to almost everyone. A 75 minute lecture will most likely put everybody to sleep. So we try not to encourage this format unless you're an expert speaker with a cutting edge topic that everyone is sitting on the edge of their seats just waiting to listen to. And another alternative is a panel discussion. The obvious difficulty here is that you have to coordinate with your panelists before you arrive, and you have to decide who will pick up each part of the topic in a different way. If you want to offer a panel discussion, be sure to have speakers in mind who will participate in your facilitated discussion. A panel discussion is often done as a plenary session. That is a conference session that addresses the topic of general interest that will be relevant and interesting to most everyone who is attending the conference. Plenary sessions are designed to encourage all participants to attend. The open forum format might sound like a combination of a panel discussion and a fishbowl. What makes an open forum unique is that people are allowed to wander between a variety of stations and other people who are offering specific information relevant to one topic. One example here is the world cafe idea. A presenter opens the floor by inviting per participants to examine a topic and then has them move around to a variety of individual stations in the room where participants can learn more about one unique aspect of that topic. Participants mill around, they discuss whatever is relevant and useful to them, and they explore what's available in the room. Often, there is someone at each station who pitches the content, offers an exercise, or gives some angle on the topic. So that covers the different formats that sometimes people have used to create workshops. I'd like to conclude this part of our think tank by highlighting the benefits you might receive if you put together a workshop of your own proposal. So what are the benefits of facilitating or presenting a workshop? One, you get to share your expertise and wisdom with your colleagues. Two, you can develop and grow your reputation as an expert in a particular area. Three, by practicing your participation, you get to hone your presentation skills, facilitation and moderation skills in a really safe, supportive, fun, casual environment. Four, 
you can build your confidence with new material by trying out a new topic with an audience that has an interest in them. Number five, getting some powerful feedback from your peers on both your presentation and your content can actually help quite a bit as you grow and develop as a presenter. Six, developing your team building skills by co-facilitating a workshop with other coaches. That's often an excellent way to develop some team facilitation skills. And lastly, learning from others as you refine that expertise, both as a presenter and as a content expert. So that's our introduction and overview to what it would be like to present a workshop at the Gay Coaches Alliance Conference in May 2019. And now we want to hear from you. What kind of questions, observations, other ideas might you have that can help all of us uh, craft some proposals and eventually be presenters at the workshop, workshop presenters at the conference itself?